Occasionally at Vintage Geek, we run across a random find, something we didn't know anything about prior to finding it. That was certainly the case with the Spectre Video 328. So buckle in, because we're about to make it a Spectre Video night. If you watch this channel regularly, you may have seen our video on the IBM PC Junior and the unboxing. Well, it turns out that when we went to go get that particular piece, we had to go to the Chicago area. And of course, being the way that I am, I always look at Facebook Marketplace things when I'm in other cities just to see if there's anything cool that maybe we don't know about at Vintage Geek. And I just happened to, this time, find a very strange system that I knew absolutely nothing about. And it happened to be this system, the Spectre Video SVI-328. Had to do some uh, internet research to find out more about it. Turns out that uh, Spectra Video was originally a company called Spectra Vision, and that came out at about 1980. Initially, they were a company that contracted to make games for the Atari 2600 system, the ColecoVision, and the Commodore VIC-20. They also made an add-on for the Atari 2600 that was kind of their first foray into computing that was basically an add-on membrane keyboard. We don't have one of those, but uh, it's on my wish list now. That particular system was kind of their first attempt at a real computer. But then, by 1983, they finally had a real computer design with the SVI-318, which would have been the model before this. That model's a little bit different because it actually had a joystick built into the actual computer unit itself and a little bit different style keyboard. This is kind of the second generation model that we have here today. Another fun fact, the Spectre Vision company, which is what it was originally called, had to rename themselves to Spectre Video because there was a hotel cable system that used the Spectre Vision name and to get out of a lawsuit, apparently, they had to change their name to Spectre Video. They also got involved in other peripherals they got into ergonomic joysticks, which we have a couple of. This particular system has 32K ROM, 80K RAM, which they put prominently on this lovely sticker here on the top. It does appear to have a cartridge slot where you can insert cartridge type software. It has a full functioning keyboard. It's not a chiclet style. It's got the full motion keys. These all seem to be pretty easy to use. I was sitting down at this a moment ago and everything seems to be pretty straightforward. It does have a, a number pad over here on the side of the keyboard, even though it's a compact unit, easy to use and everything is in one place. It has a physical caps lock button, engage that and it will lock into place, similar to modern keyboards and modern computers. I found it kind of interesting with the function keys that they're doubling up on these. So you actually have F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and then with the shift key, you can make the F6 through F10. There's a, a stop button, which is a little bit larger key here. And I assume that's gonna be similar to like the break function on the TRS-80 color computer or a halt button or something to that effect. It's got a backspace key, an enter, and it's got the two shifts and of course the space bar. Nothing too surprising there. Now as far as uh, peripherals for this particular system, we actually got this SB903 cassette unit with the original contents that we got from this estate. The interesting thing about this is that the cassette unit itself plugs in to the SVI-328 with a kind of multi-pin connector. And this is kind of similar to like the Commodore series cassette machine where there's no separate power adapter on the cassette unit itself. It's just this one connector that gives it everything, power and signal and whatnot. And so far it does seem to be at least working. I haven't tried every cassette yet, but we're gonna try a couple today on Vintage Geek. Now, I also wanna make a quick note of the TV that we're using for this. Of course, it looks like this will work with any standard monitor that would accept a composite connection. It just has a standard video and audio out through a DIN connector. It's got a five pin connector on here. You've got your composite video and your audio. This is actually a TV from my childhood. I actually got this at a flea market when I was young because I was trying to uh, play a video game system. It's actually a Panasonic 3DO, which someday we'll have to cover here on the channel. One thing I thought that was really cool about this TV is it has a great looking picture for one, but also it has this uh, pretty sweet remote control that just slides out of the uh, front of the television. Strangely, after all these years, this remote actually still works with, I presume, the battery that's been in it since I was a kid. I'm not really sure how that has happened. It does seem to work perfectly fine. We also did get a printer with this uh, computer setup. I'm not gonna set that up today because I don't have any of the ribbons for it. And I also don't have any tractor feed paper currently, which is gonna be a limiting factor there. It has a special interface card that kind of plugs into the expansion slot on the back of the system. So it's time to officially power up our Spectre Video SVI-328. Ooh, I like their little intro graphic.
pretty cool. It's got a blue background, but it looks like it's choosing the full width of the screen, which is nice. We've talked about this before on Vintage Geek, but some of these early systems only had a square on the screen where you could have the text represented and it kind of had a large border. So it's kind of nice to be able to use the full real estate of the video. This is running uh, SV Extended Basic version 1.1, which is a version of Microsoft Basic. So it should have all of the same kind of command set that you would find on most of these basic machines. We do have a, a book that came with our SVI 328. We're gonna go ahead and uh, use this to type a sample program. I was kind of interested in how the Spectre Video handles sprites. They were a gaming oriented company, at least it seems like at first. So I'm expecting that there's probably some decent handling of sprites for gameplay. There was a sample program that looks fairly short that can simulate this and be able to use a joystick to be able to control a sprite on screen. So I'm gonna try to code that in. I wanna see how well it works and also at the same time, see if the Spectre Video joystick, which we actually tried in a previous video with a different system, if it's actually functioning properly because when I was playing the Swashbuckler game with it, it seemed like the left and right movement wasn't actually working properly. This will kind of accomplish two things at once and give me a first run of coding on the SVI 328. This program demonstrates the use of a joystick to move sprites. When run, a small spaceship-like sprite will appear. The sprite can be moved anywhere within the confines of the screen and will also fire a bullet when the trigger is pressed. Sounds pretty cool, and it doesn't look like it's that many lines of code. This should be fairly easy to at least try. Just getting used to the keyboard a little bit here. Run into my first strange looking character in the code listing here. It looks almost like an and sign, but it's definitely not an and sign. All the symbols seem to be standard symbols on the keyboard. I don't see anything that looks like this unless it was a weird printing problem in this book. I'm gonna try using the and sign, but this may not end up working. Let me just see if there's any syntax errors and since we got to the first set of code lines here. Oh, well that makes sense because we haven't, uh, we haven't finished the code. Did change the screen color though, so. And it didn't give me any syntax error, so things are looking okay so far. The other thing I'm a little bit concerned about, I assume that you can plug in joysticks on the fly. I don't think you have to boot up the machine with them plugged in. I hope that doesn't bite me here. It does look like this particular system has on-screen editing where you can move the cursor around and go back and edit previous lines. Again, that's super helpful. Looks like these data lines are actually just binary representations of something. All right, we've completed all of the lines of code here for this little sprite program. Now I need to plug in the joystick before we try this. And looks like we have a hotkey on the keyboard. F5 is actually used to run, so let's see what happens. Hey, there's a sprite on the screen. Well, the sprite's there, but it's not moving anything. Well, it would appear that I have locked up the machine. Oh, control stop. Aha, appendix is very helpful sometimes. <laughs> so after much fiddling with this code, I think I finally figured out why it wasn't working initially. There is a line in the code at line 180 where it's basically reading the information from the joystick. Now there's two things that it reads. One is the position of the actual movement of the joystick, and the other one is the fire button itself. For whatever reason, the actual book shows that both of those commands are reading the same thing, which is listed as stick parentheses zero. Unfortunately, that does not seem to actually work, so I went and changed that to stick parentheses one for the movement side, and it actually does function. If I run this now, I've got my little sprite on screen, which is pretty cool, and if I move it with the joystick, it moves pretty fluidly. It's the first time I've really messed with doing a sprite on any of these basic systems, and I like what it's doing so far. It's very smooth movement. The problem is that I cannot actually get it to fire. There's supposed to be a second routine that makes basically fires kind of a bullet out of the top of the spaceship, and that does not function. But I tried a lot of different combinations of different numbers for that stick value, and I could not figure that out. But if I stop the program and I change line 180, which is the F variable, this is the fire variable, and if I change this to stick one, if I go back to the screen. Now, if I try to move the actual joystick, it's firing before movement happens. And that's because in the code, the firing part of it actually happens first. So no matter what I do to move the joystick, it's firing the missile or whatnot first. So the firing routine works, the actual drawing of the sprite and making that happen, but the control from the joystick is what I'm having trouble with. I can't seem to, no matter what numeric value I put in those fields, it either doesn't read at all, or it reads just the movement of the stick and not actually the fire button. I tried to look this up online. I haven't exhausted my resources, but 
I'm sure there's probably some other part of the command maybe they didn't include in the book, but the, the way that they have it typed in the manual is definitely incorrect because putting it in as stick zero actually doesn't register anything. But I'm pretty impressed with the actual capabilities of the system. I love the way that it moves around. I like how fluid it is when you actually do something like fire the missile, it looks great. I was able to save this program to cassette as originally intended and then reload it as I did reboot the system once during this process so I didn't have to lose all of the typing work that I had done, which is great. One of the cool things about this SVI-328 is that the person we got it from had an entire drawer full of cassettes for this that came with the system originally. So there's a lot of really cool original software titles, everything from educational to entertainment. I'm gonna start out with one today that's one of the educational titles because I always like to see what the systems do with these. This one's called Swingman. It says here is an exciting spelling game for you and your kids. Help your friend Swingman to cross the jungle, swinging from rope to rope. To achieve this, guess the mysterious word at the bottom of the screen. See what it looks like. There we go. Well, what do we have here? I like it so far. Swingman. Ha, look at that little swinging guy. That's pretty cool. Press F1 to go. What a great little animation. I like that. Yes, instructions. <laughs> okay, press the letters you think are in the word. Lose turns if wrong. So it's basically hangman. Okay. Ten words to try. Int A E I O U first. Next word. Pick a letter. How about A? Wrong. <laughs> How about E? Okay, not yet. There's gotta be a vowel in here somewhere, right? Unless they're telling me I can't use vowels. Huh. We got an O, okay. T? This is going great so far. Uh, let's see, R? Hey, all right. Oh, that doesn't necessarily help me though. Yep. No turns left, oh no. Oh! World. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna start with uh, A again. Nope. Come on. Okay, we got an I. Let's try S. How about a T? Did I try R already on this one? <laughs> it's not an R. Uh, nice. Looks like this one's gonna be Switch. You got it! All right! Plus a bonus. Ooh, that's real nice. All right, we're gonna make it all the way across. Almost there. Yay! <laughs> well, this game is pretty cool. It's actually more challenging than I would have thought, thanks to my videographer for giving me the answer on that last one. Everything is uh, going great with this game. I love the way it looks. For kids, certainly it'd be a good time. For me, it's a good time. The graphics look really good for a computer this age. So next up, I want to try a game in the entertainment series, since the last one we did was the educational series. This one's called Kung Fu Master. Our Kung Fu Master is trapped. His enemies, the dummies, attack him from all sides with kicks, punches, and even flying darts. He's got to exercise his Kung Fu to the greatest extent in order to escape narrowly. If he survives till the end of the tunnel, a hidden key is waiting for him. This is the only access to his freedom. It sounds pretty intense. Let's give it a shot. So it looks like this particular game can do one or two players. I'm gonna do the one player mode to start out with. Let me try the uh, practice mode first just so I can see what the controls are like. All right, player one ready. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I turned into an angel. <laughs> Come on. Oh man. All right, so so far I've only been able to do kicks. How do we do uh, punches and things? Seems like it doesn't really let you move until a certain point. Wow, I just keep dying. I don't really understand how to do things besides kick. And this is practice mode. <laughs> a very short first game. Guess I'm gonna have to read how to actually do all the different moves here. Trigger or space bar key activates sidekick action. Right graph key gives punch action. Joystick left, right, up and down moves the dummy left, right, forward and backward. And keyboard cursor key left, right, up and down also provide. 
priority of action of joystick and trigger are always higher than the keyboard. Okay. I guess it's the right graph key that's the most important thing because there's no other trigger on the joystick. So let's try it again. The hit detection doesn't seem to be too great on this. I swear there's been a couple times when I've actually gotten them and not gotten credit, but I suppose everybody says that. This is practice mode and I'm not doing very well at it, so I can't imagine how poorly I'll do at arcade mode, but we'll give it a shot. I actually don't know what the difference is between arcade level and normal play. We'll try normal play. Oh, there's knives that fly at you in <laughs> normal play. Fantastic, because they needed to make this more difficult. <laughs> Apparently you cannot kick a knife that is flying right at your face. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to turn around that time. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and say that this game is uh, one that I would definitely have to work on to get better at, but uh, it's really cool what they've done with it, and I love the uh, movement and the textures and everything. Next up, we're going to take it to a sports game. Well kind of a sports game, a mini golf, which uh, according to the uh, description, you are about to give an amazing display of your talents to the excited crowd and the TV viewers around the world. You can show them the real way to play mini golf because you are a true professional. I'm not sure if this knows who it's addressing. <laughs> <laughs> who it's speaking to right now, but I'm excited to see what this game is like. It says, Mini Golf provides a course of nine holes, each one more difficult and intricate than the last. Let's find out what this mini golf game is like right here on the SVI 328. All right, we got the Spectre Video logo. Mini Golf, a Jew D production for Spectre Video. Wow, as many as eight players can play mini golf. Hit the ball into the hole using as few strokes as possible. That makes sense. Less than eight strokes for one hole earns extra points, but more than 12 will score nothing. Eight per hole? This seems like it's gonna be a really advanced mini golf game. We're gonna use the external joystick, I guess. And we're just gonna do one player. Oh, it gives me a place to put in my player name. Not more than 10 letters, please. All right, how about just vintage or VG? Looks like this first hole is going to be pretty straightforward. I don't see a lot of obstacles in the way. All right, so what does it do when we move the... Okay, I see it's moving the white dot around. And then... So is it the longer you hold the button that makes the difference? It's only moving it a little bit at a time. Okay, I see it now. So the further you are away from it, the more... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes! It definitely shouldn't have taken me five shots to get in there, but I had to learn how to actually play. So let's see what the next one's like. And now we got an obstacle. You can move it back, which gives you more striking distance. Now if I go down, will it hit it at an angle if I... Yeah, it does. Nice. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> I'll take it here. Nice. This game's going alright for me so far. What's the next hole look like? A little bit more complicated this time. I'm going to try to angle this, get kind of up there a little bit. Not too far. Not bad, not bad. Let's see what I can do here. Oh no. <laughs> Ended up right back where I was. This does get quite a bit more complex. Let's see if I can bank this in or something. It's not quite as far as I needed it to go. That's all right, I'll take it. All right. This game has a lot of simplicity to it, but I actually really enjoy it. It's basically just a game of angles and shooting the ball, and it's very simple. It's just outlines, but uh, it's got some fun playability to it. I'm going to have to come back to this game at some point. It's a lot of fun. And there you have it, the Spectre Video SVI 328. A totally unexpected find when we were looking for another computer, and uh, what a pleasant surprise. I had a lot of fun with this machine. It seemed uh, fairly advanced for the time. I think it's going to make a great addition to the Vintage Geek Museum. If you like what we're doing here on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Subscribe. It's going to help us a lot. Be sure to ding that bell, get the notifications. It's all going to help a lot. And if you want a cool shirt or any of our other merchandise, head to the merch store. The link's in the description. You can get uh, great t-shirts like the one I'm wearing today. This one's kind of the Apple design because we don't have a Spectre Video design. But uh, who knows? Maybe in the future that'll become a reality. In the meantime, I'm Aaron. This is Vintage Geek.